Hello everybody, welcome to the HTML5 course. This video talks about the semantic HTML elements. The purpose of having a, a semantic HTML elements is that it is easier for humans and computers, for example, the search engines, to understand your purpose of setting up your web page a bit easier. So a web designer is able to understand your structure and a search engine is even able to um, locate the particular information a bit faster than uh, blindly searching for the keywords from the beginning. So how can we prepare a semantic HTML document? We can see an example here. So I need to start the um, HTML5 document first. Okay, I would like to start the web page by uh, beginning it with the HTML tag. And we can see that I need to specify the language of the uh, web page that I'm going to produce. Here, set XX means that my um, web page that is going to build has no linguistic content. So if your web page consists of English, we can simply say here as EN. But if my web page simply has no linguistic content, I simply use setlexx. The reason I use setlexx here is that I will include a lot of lorem ipsum content that is having no semantic meaning to the whole web page. So I set up the title as usual, which is inside the head of the web page. I also set up one meta tag that tells the character encoding used for this web page. So the character set is UTF-8. Okay. Okay, I set up a link to this web page. Um, the link refers to a a CSS file called style.css and this file has a relation to the HTML file that I'm now producing because the CSS file represents a style sheet that is used in this uh, HTML document and the type of this CSS file is simply text or CSS so I've already prepared a CSS file that is to be used later. So we can take a look at it. I'm going to introduce the aside element, which is a semantic element in HTML5. And when it comes to using the aside element, I will have a style indicated by this line here. So we will be able to see the effect later when I really create the element uh, on the HTML file later. Okay, let me amend the head. So now head contains the title, the meta tag, and the link tag. So let me go to the body. For 
the body I need to include a header. So what, what does it mean by the header? A header is simply a place, usually at the beginning of your web page, to show the um, title or the main idea of your web page. Okay, so we can see that the header is shown on the right hand side. Um, when we use header, it is of course better than merely using the H1 uh, element because the header gives the purpose of this content instead of showing the lines plainly. I have given the um, semantic meaning of this line to the web page as well as to the search engines that are going to search for this web page. Okay. And after the header, I would like to add some navigation links so that the reader of the web page will feel a bit easier to navigate to other parts of the website. So um, the navigation element is represented by NAV tag. Okay. And inside the navigation element, I would like to add a number of lists in the form of an unordered list. So now we can see that I have created an unordered list. Um, and the first point is simply a hyperlink to, to a place indicated by this ID. Okay. And the title of the hyperlink is section one. So when I uh, put the cursor on top of the hyperlink, I'm able to see section one as the a label next to the cursor and the thing in, uh, to be shown on top of the hyperlink is simply go to section 1. So let me create one more such link. Okay, the second link is given here. So I would have another hyperlink that goes to section two indicated by the ID here. And the meaning of sections one and two will be shown later. Also, I would link um, this web page to another web page indicated by this hyperlink. And this hyperlink will link to another web page having this file name about.html. So that we can take a look at the about.html file now. It is simply a very simple HTML file that shows um, this is the about page at end of the page. And for this web page, I also created a hyperlink that goes back to the home page that I am creating now. So when I click on the home link, I will be able to go back to the semantic HTML5 demonstration page. 
So this is the idea of the about.html. And here we see that we use en as the language. The purpose of having en in the language um, part is that I want to tell the browser and the uh, web page reader as well as the search engines that the content inside this web page is English. So let me go to the HTML file that I am creating. Okay, so now we have already finished the navigation links, and then we are going to handle the main section of the web page. And the main section is simply the major idea or the major content that you are going to show to the web page users. So in the main element, I would like to set some sections. So we can see that I have set up an ID here. And this ID is simply referring to the ID used in the navigation links here. Okay. So when uh, I want to refer section one to the main content, I will be able to direct the, um, the page to the content shown inside this section indicated by this section one id so what will, will i put inside this section i will have this idea so i put a heading first and after the heading i would like to include a figure So a figure element will be able to help me include a, an, an image. Okay, so when I want to include an image, I can just use the img element. And in the src attribute, I need to include the file name that I'm going to put on the web page. And I would like to set up the height of the image together with the width of the image. So these two numbers are in pixel units. So the height is 300 pixels and width is also 300 pixels and alt here means the content to be shown if the uh, image cannot be shown for some purpose for example if the uh, image is corrupted you are not able to show the image to the user instead you will be able to show this uh, statement shown here which is a lake okay in addition to the figure, I would also like to add a caption that is describes the image. So how can I do that? I can make use of the caption element. Okay, so the caption is shown underneath the image. So fake caption is also one of the semantic HTML5 elements. And let me say again here, the height and width refer to the pixel size.
So after the figure and the caption, I would like to include an article inside section one. So how can I do that? I can simply create an article element. Inside this article, I'm able to add a header again. So what is the content of this header for section one? I just want to say that I want to include an article. So how can I include the article? I can create a paragraph. So for simplicity, I just copy some logarithm ipsum content from the logarithm ipsum generator on the web. Okay, the content is shown on the right-hand side of the screen. Okay, we can see the article very clearly. And if I want to add a link that let me go back to the very beginning of the web page, I can add a link after the article um, element. Okay, here the hash sign means that I'm going to uh, go back to the very top of the current web page. So I will be able to set up a link that goes back to the very beginning. Okay, when I click on that link, I'm able to go back to the header of my web page. So this completes my first section. If I want to set up another section, I simply do similar things with my section one. So section two, ID simply means that I'm going to create another section that will be used by the navigation link to go back to the corresponding section. So I'm able to do the section two here. So in this section, I would like to add another um, heading. And also I would like to include another article. And for the article, I just copy and paste the lower ipsum generated words. So we can see that I have another section that has a lot of words. And also I can create another link to the very beginning of the web page. Okay, the link is shown here. So I can simply click on this link to go back to the very beginning 
which is simply the uh, header of the web page. And we can check the um, navigation link here. When I click on go to section two, I'm able to go to the second section of the web page. And when I click on go to section one, I will simply jump to the first section indicated by um, the section indicated by the section element, which is this one. Okay. So after adding the two sections, the main part of the web page is already complete. And after the main part, I would like to add the aside um, element. So when we want to put some minor information on the web page, we can make use of the aside element. So we can see the effect after we have produced it. So the content inside the aside element will be secondary compared to the content shown in the main element. For example, I can add some details of other information pertaining to the web page. So a details tag is going to show some content that is hidden initially. When you click on the link indicated by the summary um, component, you will be able to see the um, full content. So we will be able to see the effects after the demonstration here. So I have a summary of the details element, which is simply a clickable link that will lead me to the content inside the details element. So I would like to show a number of hyperlinks in the form of an unordered list. So let me put the link here. Okay, so when I enter the link in this way, I'm able to see the link inside the details element. And after clicking the summary, I will be able to show the link. And when I click on the link, I'm able to go to the HTML5.org website indicated by the href value. Okay. And I can do similar things to add two more links. So now I have three links. When I click on a link to, I'm able to go to w3.org. And when I click on link three, I'm able to go to the Mozilla Developer Network. Okay. So this is the way to show the details element that would contain some clickable link that would give me some other information. Okay. So this completes the aside element. And at the end, I would like to add a footer 
of the web page. So a footer is simply giving some information to the web reader about the web author. So for example, I would like to say that the author is John Smith and the copyright also goes to John Smith. So this symbol is giving me the copyright logo here. Okay. I'm also able to add the address of John Smith. So the address is given here. It is shown here. And I would like to add the email address to help the reader link to John Smith. Okay, the email link is provided at the end of the footer section. So we can see that we can simply give the information of the author by using the footer element. So the footer element will usually be the final part of your web, web page. So this completes a very simple demonstration of the HTML5 semantic elements. So we can see that there are a lot of um, elements about the structure of your web page. For example, the header together with the navigation links. And we can also include the main content of your web page by using the main element. And for each of the sections inside the main element, you can indicate each of the sections by using the suitable ID, okay? And you can also include a figure together with a figure caption corresponding to the same figure. And you, you can also add an article inside a section. And after the main element, you can also add some aside elements. So for example, I have an aside element here that gives me some links to other websites. And these links are contained in the details element. So I'm able to click on the summary part in order to go to other information pertaining to the web page. So for my case, I have three more links. And at the end, I'm able to add a footer that shows the information of the web author. This is the end of the video. If you have any questions about my video, please leave your questions on the comment section below the video. If you like this video, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.